Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. Someone commented last week that basically this show was uh, me and T waking up having breakfast with the viewer. So good morning. We've got coffee. I hope you've got bacon sandwiches. So good morning, good breakfast. Terry good morning. T. How was your breakfast? My breakfast uh, was lacking. I had half a chasson de pomme. Mm. Do you know why I had half a chasson de pomme? Ton, 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 ton. Because you ate the other half of it in the car this morning. I had this beautiful thing waiting for me, all crispy, all ready to go. Gone. That's a, le a lesson, people. Don't leave food lying around. <laughs> this is true. Uh, Terry, it's bouldering season. It's kind of coming up. Bouldering season. It's competition season, I should say, Yay. really. Uh, and we've got a few competitions that we've had and coming up. So check out this competition news. With the first round of the IFSC Boulder World Cup taking place in Meringin on Friday of this week, the Boulder European Cup was a chance for some athletes to get rid of their competition jitters. The whole event was streamed on the main Epic TV YouTube channel. In the men's comp, it was Austria's Nikolai Uznik who took the win with three tops. Switzerland's Niels Fav took second place, just beating Francis Emilian Casado by attempts to top. For the women, it was Francis Mailis Pizzalunga who took gold with three tops. Francis Flavi Kohot got second with two tops, and Austria's Jesse Pilz took the bronze medal. Pizza Lungo. Pizza Lungo, what an incredible name, right? Pizza Lungo. Uh, I feel she's new on the comp scene. I've, I've heard I've, of her. I would have heard that name before. In Italian, is mm. there like a translation? Because she's French, isn't she? Yeah, but all people from Italy emigrated to France during the war and stuff like that. D don't mention the war again. You know, you can't talk about that. You're not allowed. Um, pizza <laughs> really? Lunga. What does Lunga mean in Italian? Uh, it's like a long pizza. That's an awesome nickname. Surname. Awesome nickname? Not. Surname. I'm sorry. Uh, that competition was an epic TV. You can go back and rewatch that. Uh, it's on the main channel. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, peeps. But about pizza and Italy, I got some sport climbing news from Italy. 19-year-old Laura Rogora reported on her Instagram that she sent Terapia d'Urto. The route starts in a small cave, making it a brutal almost 90 degrees overhanging line. It actually combines two routes, Larciere 8C and Gusfraba 8C+. Check out the video on Epic TV Italia of the short but brutal 9A+. Amazing, amazing, amazing news. Uh, two points on the 9A counter. And if you actually want to see all the holds and the route up close, Stefano made that 360 video on the route. Oh, is that the same route? That's the same route. And it's actually pretty interesting. I thought it was a bit gimmicky. Instead, it is really up close. I guess you don't need a filmmaker that follows you. because. Can you select the angles or has he done that Yeah, you can us? spin it around. You can also just look at the forest for, you know, five minutes. <laughs> well, he sends. That's yeah. actually quite cool. That's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> good way of doing it. Um, I'm talking eight C's now, bouldering roundups. We haven't done this in a while and it's always nice to chat about hard boulders. As reported on 8a.nu, Nick Bradley has sent the eight C painted black in Colorado, America. On a little interview on 8a.nu, he speaks about how the boulder is his hardest to date. He first tried it in 2020 before conditions shut him down. But after going away and training, 2021 was his year. John Glassberg has climbed the Nest, a test piece 8C boulder in Las Vegas, as reported on his Instagram account. It took him nine sessions to send it, having previously done the stand start. He dedicated three months of training to climb it. Matt Foltz has made the first ascent of two 8Cs, called Sound of Violence and Warp Speed, as reported by 8a.nu. He's also recently done two 8B plus boulders and is clearly on form. 8C is apparently like an easy grade nowadays, people just smashing it. I know, it's like the 9A roundup, it's, we should just add a plus in there. What? How do you mean? I'm so confused. Like not do an 8C roundup anymore, just only 8C plus. Only 8C roundup. plus roundups? Yeah. Jeez. I, I feel those are coming soon. You are harsh. You are like the taskmaster of the climbing athlete world. Yeah, I just imagine you sort of like on a queen's table in a throne, just looking very unimpressed while all these people add slashes to stuff. To be honest, I'm too of a too bad of a climber to do that. So I think I'll, I'll rein it in and uh, rein you it know, in. Just a hey, <laughs> talking about quick. Get I, it like hey. on the throne, reining it. Okay. Let's move on to some sport climbing free solo news from Spain. Jorge Diaz Rulo made a daring free solo ascent of Darwin Dixit 8C. 
The route used to be graded 8B+, however, due to a couple of holds breaking, now it's considered 8C. Jorge previously sent this route back in November, but now he went back with a couple of friends and some crash pads. So is it a high ball or a free solo? Is that question directed at me? No, to everybody, to the people. But yes, Matt, what do you think? Here's my opinion, right? I have seen people fall off six metre routes being absolutely fine. Mm. I've also watched my mate fall off a one metre route and snap his leg in half, okay? The second you're climbing up stuff without a rope, it's well dangerous and you can hurt yourself badly. So for me, it's like, is it highball? Is it free solo? I, I really think anything over, over any height is basically a free solo because if you fall off, it's going to really hurt. That's my opinion. Right, but then the crash pads, there were many, so it probably would have been a soft landing. My mate fell off one meter, leg in half, six crash pads, doesn't what, make a difference. What sport was that? That was bouldering. No, it was kind of English it... trad, like oh. bouldering trad routes, you know, one of them. Um, I don't know, it's super impressive though. Yeah, like, but... What's the... You were looking into because Dave McLeod did this route, didn't he? He soloed it way back in the day. Yeah, so it looks like the crux is called a lip, you mm. know, when it curves up. So I guess the fall is not too bad from there with some crash pads. I don't know. You've been there in Margalef. Does it look high or not? I have. I, I didn't realize it was that crag until okay. you showed me the video this morning. And I was like, oh, it's that one. It's still high. Yeah, it's mega high. Mm. Um, and it's right into a road. I just... I still don't quite get this mentality of free soloing sport routes, but... It's super I mean, impressive. I can barely watch the videos. Or oh, you just like this. Yeah, it's just like I know I have to watch it, but not really. Uh, please make it. Obviously, you're making it, or else they wouldn't post the video because that would be really mean. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, super impressive. I mean, just the headspace you need to do something like this. Yeah, it's mega enough. Yeah. Um, I've got some more kind of bouldering news, kind of sport climbing news. When is a boulder problem a sport route? Well, let's find out more. As reported on 8a.nu, Kylian Chaprier has sent the 35-move mega boulder La Force in Fontainebleau. There are various grading options for this boulder. It's either a 9a route, an 8c boulder, or an 8c plus font traverse grade. It's a true endurance boulder going through a huge roof. Kylian fell three times on the final sketchy jump to the crack before sending the climb. What a route this one is. Um, it's so long, it's kind of graded a sport route. Mm. It's kind of got that boulder grade. There's that weird font traverse grade that no one really understands. Okay. Um, but yeah, what a, what a mega tick. But it's not for the 8C plus counter, because it's not an 8C plus. No, it's an 8C boulder. Okay. If you're going to grade it like a boulder. Okay. Or a 9A route, but it's just super long. Like it's an endurance fest, that thing. How many moves is it? Millions. Millions. <laughs> Can you imagine a route a million moves long? How long would that take? Depends and how quick you are it? as a climber. If it was no, you like, climbing, it's going to take six hours. I was going to say six years, but okay. <laughs> Terry's yeah. not the fastest climber, right? She likes to take her time, shake out. I enjoy Admire climbing. Yeah. That's why. See, I, I just want to get it done as quickly as humanly possible and come down and chill. Yeah, but you can also chill on the route and shake off and like, you know. I, I, don't, know how you, I don't know how you rest so well on a route. I can't do it. Oh, I don't. I'm just scared of falling. I try oh, right, not to fair fall. Enough. <laughs> fair enough. There you go. About not falling, uh, the 9A Roundup is all about people who haven't fallen. Jonathan Seagrass, or J-Star, has made the first repeat of Joe Skinner, The Activator. He describes it as hard as hell for me. I could conjure some excuse, but in short, it just felt hard. 9A slash plus. Spanish climber Eder Lomba sent Rain Shadow, a 9A in Malum Cove. It was first climbed by Steve McClure in 2003. 23 year old Stefano Folgarit, after 25 sessions, made the first ascent of Ignocchi della Mente, proposing a grade of 9A. Last but not least, Martina Demo, only 19 years old and started climbing four years ago, she now sent her first 9A. Josita is a 50 meter test piece with 130 moves and it was first climbed by Adam Andra. And it's a link up between Joe Blau, 8C, and Morenita, 8C. Let's hear more from Martina. Regarding the 9A, still hard to believe for me, and she's like a long, never ending dream like to stay here in Oliana and yeah um, it's also hard to say why it was possible to climb it that fast but probably because I was focusing more on climbing on lots of different routes the last couple of years and yeah 
therefore get like a white base and then we focused on climbing only maybe my style but rather I wanted to be good in every style and see lots of different routes and yeah also why because I focused a lot of on the climbing and therefore I like got better and better in reading the routes and finding my own perfect data. She's been climbing for four years and she sent 9A. I have no words. That was the pause for, you know, oh, I the see. no words. The dramatic effect. Yes. Um, I, 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 I have no words. I don't know what to say. Like, I think it's incredible. Um, she only climbs outside. Probably, you know, we should all stop indoor training because of her <laughs> and only enjoy the outdoors. Uh, but yeah, what an incredible scent. And uh, I feel, you know, the 9B counter is waiting for her. I agree with you. It is coming. And we're about to move on to the 9B counter. So, 9B counter time. Laura Rogora. Yeah, it's two Lord points. Rogora. Rogora? Rogora. Rogora. I am also probably saying it wrong. Laura. Uh, 9A plus. Is that two points? 9A plus is two points. And Martina with one point. Boom. There we go. Boom. What a week for the 9A counter. Right, let's move on to Epic TV shop stuff. Uh, and there's a collection of gear and you're excited by shoes. Because La Sportiva is back in stock. And I kind of feel you can never go wrong with La Sportiva. I mean, they have all the shoes you need or want. Trad shoes, comp shoes, beginner shoes. What's your favorite La Sportiva shoe? Go on, under pressure right you now. You cannot do this If to you me. had to pick one La Sportiva shoe for life, what would it be? Probably one I haven't tried yet. That's so a I really want to on no, the fence no, answer. I really want to try the Squamas. And then uh, I want to give the Muras again a go because I had them as a first shoe and... It was a terrible idea. That was idea. your first shoe. I know it was a terrible idea. I'm uh, impressed with that. No, it was a terrible idea. Um, but I'd like to give those a go again. And then the theory for indoor climbing, mm -hmm. I'd like to try those. It's just, essentially, it's a wish list. I, I, I agree. I think I haven't worn a lot Ooh, of those shoes. Oh, the Pythons. The pi but then what's those that shoe? Good. You got the Oasi, right? Uh, no, that's Tenaya's. No, what's... Oh, yeah. I should know that. What's the other shoe? The last particular uh, shoe no, you always tacky. wear. The tacky. There yeah. we come on. You every time you put that on, you're like, this is the best shoe I've ever ever worn. I know. In but that voice. Uh, yes, <laughs> but they're so far gone that I want to, you know, try something new. All right, fair enough. Uh, I've got Petzl gear to chat about. Um, mm. Look, I love Petzl gear. I feel like it's one of those things you stick it on and you just, I just feel better because it is good stuff. Harnesses, helmets, super lightweight helmets, ice axes. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, it's 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 winter's gone, it's summertime, not necessarily true. Like summer alpinism is a thing. In the Alps, you're going up on the glacier, you need crevasse rescue gear, you need helmets. Petzl's always good and it sells super quick on the shop. It, it's just like there and it's yes. gone. So if you've been waiting, it's up now, go for it. I feel they have a lot of like super lightweight gear. Petzl. Like harnesses, quick draws. Yeah. Helmets. Yeah, the Scirocco is If ridiculous. you want to go on like fast and light, Pick Petzl. There we go. If you want to be like a Uli Steck uh, kind of person, choo, choo, choo. then that's the way you want to go. Uh, content couch now. Uh, and we're going to start off with the Climbing Daily, if you don't mind, uh, which is Will yes. Bosey. Uh, Will Bosey has recently become the sixth person in the world to climb 9B+. I caught up with him for a little chat about that send. So the King Capella line, um, I first spotted it on the first day I went to the sector again this uh, year. Um, and I actually went because Dave Graham was trying Capella that day so I went to have a little like watch and uh, it's like the first route as you walk in and I just looked at it and I was like oh you know it does look like there's holds on this route and I knew it was a project and I was like oh I wonder if it's possible so that was when I first sort of noticed it and then I think even the next day I uh, came back and I actually like like uh, abbed it onto it just to check it out and yeah, then from there, just uh, over the next, I suppose, two months or something, kept giving it more and more attempts till I found the holds and where it actually, where the line went. In my mind, it feels a full grade harder than Lacape and Furia, which are both 9B, so then it has to be 9B+. I suppose only time will tell with the with future repeats. 
That is part of a two-part interview with Will. Uh, first part was all about um, King Capella, which is his new 9B+. Second part of the interview is a bit more about sort of Moscow IFSC training and the other routes that he's done. So uh, stay tuned for that. I think it's coming out tomorrow, I think. Not next week? Nope, tomorrow, I think. Okay. <laughs> Hope. That's my plan. I've got a schedule and everything. I'm well professional. Right. All right. Thanks. Um, next movie is or will be on the Epic TV channel also tomorrow, and it's about Beatrice Colli. So this is the second part of the series. So if you haven't seen the first one yet, maybe check that one out first to give a bit more context. Um, but yeah, she's back training, calm climbing, and uh, sends an... Oh, I'm spoiling a bit too much, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. She sends something outdoors that's really hard. I don't think I'm spoiling anything. <laughs> Climber sends rock climb. News shocker. Um, comment of the week and I've got a bone to pick with this one Ooh, a couple why? of weeks ago we were like look guys join us sing a song so Teresa doesn't have to be mortally embarrassed every time I try to make her sing we didn't get many we got uh, Mike was it Mike last week Mike Michael, 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 Michael Roberts guys send us your comment of the week song and we'll probably play it because there aren't many people sending it in so Instagram us uh, you can email climb at epictv.com there are many ways to get in touch send us your song and now Terry T you have to sing because there's no one else here to do it. Do you know the tune? No, what tune? Oh, you want to do the tune? Okay, ready? Three, two. Can I do the humming though? No, you have no, to sing. No, I don't know how no, to sing to it. No, you have to it. sing, you have to I'll sing. I'll do the you humming. Have to give, okay, no, you have to, fine. No, you need the Three, bass. Three, two, one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I get my comment of the week down in <laughs> salon. I get my da 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 in Chamonix. It's Justin Bieber there. Peaches. It's kind of in the Epic TV office a lot. <laughs> Let's move on uh, to the comments. Uh, go ahead, because I lost mine. Okay, um, mine is from Juan Batero, and he says, just to add, as a Colombian climber, Ancelo is the first Colombian to climb that grade, uh, just saying. Yeah, this is to do with the 9A roundup last week. Um, we talked about uh, Angelo, I think, uh, who's climbed a 9A. And yeah, first Colombian to climb that grade, which we didn't mention in the news show. Apologies for not mentioning it. That's a cool fact statistic. Uh, so congratulations to you, sir. Uh, I definitely lost my comment because my Mac doesn't take screenshots anymore. So if anybody knows how to fix that little problem, uh, let me know. So I'm looking for something real quick. Just talk in the meanwhile, Matt. You want me to fill? Yes. Uh, Flo, if you, Flo, our editor, would you mind just doing some kind of like five minutes later thing? I don't know. Make it up. Five minutes later. Found it. Nice. Um, it's from Xeno87. And uh, so he mentioned that thing that, we you know, we rock up and have breakfast and mm. do a new show type thing. But then he says, because I actually replied to this comment because I was like, hey, we actually put effort in this and we have to set everything off, <laughs> faces included. Not me. This is natural. Oh, natural. Anyway, he replied to my comment and said, so any chance we can get a breakfast episode of Climbing Daily one day? After all, you guys kept me good company for the last bazillion months of lockdown. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I'm, I'm glad, you know, somebody actually listens to us. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to do a breakfast, but what you can do is go to the podcast. Uh, podcast available on Spotify, uh, iTunes. So you can put us on as a podcast in the morning for breakfast. So we'll join you for that bacon sandwich we talked about earlier in the show. But yeah, I want to mention if if there are any any other lockdowns ever in We're in one world. right now, <laughs> T. We're in lockdown. France is locked down. Is it? I want to mention that, uh, you know, we'll be there for you. We will be. You'll hear our dulcet tones. Cheers for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe and we will see you next week. <laughs>